of those. And then we are going to just talk about um, what's happening in terms of EPA reaching out to the newly elected officials in town um, with this new round of elections. And we'll wrap up with any final announcements, anything else people have. Anything that anyone wants to make sure is on the agenda that you didn't hear? Any questions, topics? And Kevin, you should let me know if you want any sort of time to make any comments. Okay. Um, okay, great. Well, I think with that, and we're gonna we'll be wrapping up at 7:30. So hopefully that timing works for people. So maybe we'll do a round of intros in terms of people who are here in the room, and then we'll go to the people who are on Zoom. So maybe I'll start with Denise. Can we start with you? Sure. <laughs> You're a new new face to the cat. Yeah. So. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Denise Ledesma. I'm going to be taking over for Janine coming up, so kind of trial run, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm a community involvement specialist at KPHE. Thank you. And Janine will be around till I think the spring. I guess Janine, when we come to you, you'll let us know. Yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Denise Chan. Uh, I'm the Army Republican Unit here working with OB1 and the tech stuff. Uh, so, I'm Charles, I'm the community involvement coordinator for uh, part of the EPA. Eric Gunderbox, the member, homeowner, so forth. Amanda Bartley, another remedial project manager here with EPA, working on both what you want and what you see. Nice to see you. I'm our chair community involvement coordinator, EPA. Treat Swami, a technical advisor to the CAG under the TAS program, Technical Assistance Services for Communities from Keo. <laughs> I'm Ryan Golton. I'm the facilitator for this group from the Community Center Southern. Sabrina Forrest, EPA, Lead Remedial Project Manager. I'm Terry Hart. I'm a member of the CAG and I want a full hat like two stuff. Because <laughs> I need a haircut. Yeah, it should be red though. <laughs> I put the Santa hat away after uh, Three Kings Day Saturday. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeffrey Watson. I work in the lead program for CDCAG. I'm Taylor Rizzi, and I also work in the lead program for CDCAG. Um, Taylor Mays, I'm also part of the lead program at CDCAG. Aaron Martinez, uh, program manager at the program. Ed Brown, uh, used to be on council and now I'm still on the health yeah. department. The board of health and our member for nomination. <laughs> One of you, yeah. In fact, they're not over 12, is it? So, no, I think they can. Um, I'm Sarah Grace. I'm with the state health department. I'm the project manager for this project on the state health. I'm Paul Redfrey. I'm a uh, resident of the NA as well. Thank you. Okay, so for the people online, and Christian, I might do you last because I'd love to hear a little bit about the task force that you're on. Um, so maybe if it's okay, we'll start with Tom and then Renee, Martinez, and then Amy. And so that we're going to you guys on Zoom. So if, yeah. Maybe I'll... Hi, Tom. I think oh. you're muted. Yeah, you're still muted, Tom, sorry. But that's okay, you can just wave. Oh, there you go. <laughs> sorry about that. Tom Simmons, I'm a risk assessor with uh, CDPHG. Good evening, everyone. Renee Martinez, I'm a regional director for Southern Colorado with Senator Michael Bennett. Hey, Renee. Hi, Amy. Hi, I'm Amy Hensley in EPA Region 8. I work in the land division in the RICRA program. So I'm here related to the, the SLAG update. Great. And then Janine and Renee Cortez, and then yeah. Did you say me? <laughs> it's a little muffled. I'm Janine. I'm with the State Health Department, and soon not to be, um, at least by June. But I still will be in the background, and um, I do believe that Colorado Smelter will be in the capable hands of Vanessa Ledesma. Thank you. Renee Cortez. Uh, Renee Cortez. I'm also a risk assessor at the state of Colorado. 
and I think it's brick fuel, right? That's the state. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Sorry, I didn't uh, type my name in properly. I will fix that. Uh, Rick Buell with uh, EPA. I'm the Land Chemicals and Redevelopment Division Director. And uh, like Amy, I'm listening in for the EAF slag uh, portion. Thank you. Oh, got it. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, Christina, love to uh, have you introduce yourself and maybe say a word about the task force if you're a part of. Yeah, so... Good evening, everyone. My name is Christina Trujillo, and I'm the executive director over at Still Work Center of the West. And so there's a task force together with various um, couple of community members that are involved that originally started from the revitalization committee that's now the CSRP here locally for the Superfund site, as, long, as well as representatives from Pueblo Urban Renewal, both staff and board of directors. And we're working on seeing what we can do to help implement some of the changes and improvements that the community wants to make in the Superfund site. Great. And so, Christina, I think as we go forward today, I think it'll be great to hear how and whether you all see yourselves participating in the revitalization discussions um, that are happening starting later this month. And, but it's great to see sort of the bridge from the CSRP effort. Um, so anyway, if, does anyone else, is there anyone else in this group that's been involved in the task force? And Christina, in terms of like, just one last question about the task force, when you say you're working to implement um, what sounds like projects and ideas that came out of the CSRP, is that, What's the relationship to begin to the work of Begin, the Begin group that was active until recently? So we do have three representatives from Begin that actually sit on this task force with us. And so what we're doing is working with Pueblo Urban Renewal to identify um, zones within the Superfund site to be able to designate them TIF areas. Um, we're kind of a little bit of a stalemate right now with um, Pueblo Urban Renewal and getting through some of the legal portions of it through Pueblo City Council and the mayor's office to try to get um, certain areas within the Bessemer neighborhood starting off with a TIF zone. So our hope is to be able to utilize the designation, hopefully in the future as a TIF zone, to be able to implement a lot of the projects that um, BEGIN is looking at and have discussed and are looking at in the past. It has everything from including more safety measures to improving the lighting. It has to do maybe with more of a walkability route throughout the area, as well as seeing what we can do about some of the abandoned businesses and homes in the area to get them, um, you know, remediated with any asbestos or see what we can do with working with other agencies or even myself as an agency to see what we can do about, you know, flipping houses to get them into a better condition to where the community doesn't look so blighted. Um, we're also looking right now at the EPA's community change grant program that is taking place because a lot of the activities within that grant specifically fall into what this task force with people of BEGIN are trying to do. So one of them I know is Benedict Park, for example, is there really, there, there's a small group of individuals that are really trying to improve Benedict Park. Within this grant, we would be able to make it more eco-friendly and to do more development on the, the, the site itself. When we're talking about walkability um, within this grant, we have the ability to look at what options we can do and improve into this area to make it more walkable and encourage people to use, you know, walking as far as exercise or maybe bikes or scooters or something like that as, as opposed to their vehicles. So when we're looking at the CSRP as a whole, from all of the ideas that they had, we're trying to put them in sort of a phase one, phase two, phase three type of category 
determine, okay, what is the most immediate need of the community in this area? And what is that community block look like? What do we wanna focus on? And what are the projects that we want to do in this area? And so, uh -oh. Uh, Christina, we just lost you. It's being froze. I think it's our end. This is we can see. It's not because other people are in. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Christina, we lost you for a minute. Okay. Well, as soon as she's back, we'll maybe let her finish up. But uh, Paul and others who who will involved with begin, do you want to? Well, Paul. <laughs> but I guess. Oh, Christina, you're back. I was just I was asking. Um, we lost you mid sentence. Oh, you're muted. And now you're muted. Oh yeah. Sorry, my my internet. I don't know what happened. It kicked me off for a second. No problem. Um. We, you were, I don't know if you noticed what you were, like, where you are, but what? She was breaking up into the phases. Yeah, you were just trying to talk about the phases and, like, prioritizing the, the making priorities. Correct. And, and that's what we're looking at right now. And so phase one that we're projecting is to focus on the northern corridor a little bit up around um, maybe towards towards northern of seeing what we can do with that area just because it seems like there's so much traffic right there and then like two blocks to the east and the west to see what we can do about improvements as far as something as simple as sidewalks in that area so this community task force is just really seeing about putting a time frame on everything because once and if hopefully a TIF zone is designated, we wanna be able to utilize the most of our time during that clock countdown and don't wanna waste a year or two finding projects or finding the funding for projects. So that's what we're doing right now. The other thing that I will mention is there's another community partner in an industrial business that is in that area that is really excited to see what they can do and how they can help moving forward for improvement of the city since they are going and are a much green, more friendly um, company. So I think that's really what we're trying to do. It's, it's a task force that has a lot of priorities and a lot of things that we want to accomplish, but we also want to be strategic in how we do it and see how we can leverage different funding sources in order to accomplish the overall goal. So this is going to happen hopefully between three and the next 20, 30 years of hopefully we'll we'll be done with everything. Um Christina, thank you so much for the update. And I, I'm just I'm particularly interested in you doing that because we have been hearing over the past few years that I've been involved in obviously before that from the folks at the begin and many of the folks here who are have been very involved in the CSOP efforts. And so we've been hearing updates about a lot of what you're talking about and having discussions about it. So it, it does seem like one of the priorities of this group, I think, has been to connect the dots and make sure people aren't working in silos and very glad to have. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's it. And that's where I'm going to throw Terry Hart under the bus here in a minute. So, you know, this is where I think it's really great that he's the one who really introduced me to this keg group and is like, we need to all be working together. That way we're not duplicating services. And that way, what I know is a priority from what you have or what data you have, we could then use it for our projects moving forward. Um, we've only been meeting, I would say, for like maybe the last half of 2023. So it was just really outlining our priorities and what we wanted to focus on. By the end of last year, we were hopeful to have that TIF designation, but we more than likely will see more traction with that after the mayoral election, hopefully, and see how we could work out some of those legal 
you know, kind of questions that are lingering out there for everybody. Um, but that's definitely something that I really believe in and what I'm trying to do. And even with my agency as being a nonprofit, we can apply for funds that like the city or Pura or urban or, or the CSRP who doesn't have the 501c3 status can apply for some of these funds to bring these dollars here locally. Um, I believe that as us being a business in the heart of Bessemer and being the stewards of the history of CFNI, I think it's our obligation to carry on that longstanding history of being involved in the community and seeing what we can do to help improve it. And so, like I said, it's all over the gamut from safety to beautification and to walkability and reducing emissions into the area um, surrounding the residents that live within the Superfund site. And whatever EPA grants that come down the line to see what we can do about, you know, some more mitigation of maybe some business properties or helping to improve blighted houses or businesses to see how we can reinvigorate the economy locally in those areas. Thank you. I see the right here. Hey, Christina. Right. Yep, this is Sabrina Forrest, the uh, lead remedial project manager. Um, thanks for coming. So was the 2020 um, Colorado Smoker Revitalization Plan that the city adopted sort of the, the starting point for some of the short, medium, and long-term goals? Yes, exactly. That's exactly it. And I think it's taking some of those goals and expanding upon it a little bit more in detail. I think the thing that I brought to the task force is how can we link these all together? How can they, instead of be 20, 12, 15 different projects that we've seen on there, how can they flow together as one big project? And what makes the best sense and how to tackle those um I guess goals and the desires of the community. And then looking at now what's most important and what do we need to focus on as a priority? So long answer, yes, we're using exactly that. And then coming up along the way by chance and conversation of other things that we could possibly do that would make sense while we're accomplishing one project that's already been discussed in that um, plan that the city laid out. Does anyone else have any other comments or questions? I'll just uh, go ahead and throw two cents in. A lot of us have had this conversation quite a bit over the last number of years about the importance of making sure that the Urban Renewal Authority is involved in what we're trying to do because what we're trying to do through the revitalization process where we've got the first study out dealing primarily with OU1 area, which is primarily a residential area. Um, and then that obviously in the segue into OU2, uh, which is, uh, you know, the business uh, part of it. Uh, a lot of us argue that, uh, you, you know, uh, you, you can't cut it in half, but it is cut in half. So we need to figure out how to navigate that. And one of the reasons why we've talked about this quite a bit is we have a lot of agencies, particularly on the federal and state level that have potential funding, particularly now, like Christine is talking about, uh, the funding that could help us with an overall budget to drive an overall plan. And, uh, but no agency, no single agency can do it all. And so the theory is, is if we could put this under uh, Urban Renewal Authority, that that can hold the full pieces and parts of the full part of the plan, uh, we can connect in the various funding pieces, and then that's what we can use to drive it. And the Urban Renewal Authority has the beautiful opportunity, um, if we do it correctly, to do uh, tax increment financing in order to pay for the improvements. And basically what tax increment financing is, is it's a mechanism to allow you to borrow money through the government resources bonding, uh, which is you know, lower income or lower interest rates. And they can borrow the money and then they can put it in today into the projects we're trying to do and then you pay it over time with the tax increment financing. So this is part of the vision of what we had talked about doing 
oh, somewhere between 100 and 150 years ago when we first started this project. And and, uh, and uh, uh, some of us were just I'm, fairly I'm young high school. Then, so. <laughs> anyway, that, that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. And I'm extremely thrilled that uh, Christina has helped uh, form this uh, TAP and Force group and that she's uh, one of the members on it. Uh, she got a lot of love for this area and she was going to help uh, the community and us quite a bit. So, Christina, I definitely want to make sure that you're here with us uh, as often as you can be. Um, and uh, Amanda is trying to pull together all the pieces and parts of uh, heading forward with the revitalization effort that comes out of, uh, out of this process, the uh, Superfund process. And so my hope is that there's an extremely good communication as we move through and assist with that prioritization process, that big picture. And then, uh, frankly, I want us to be knocking on so many doors and begging for money, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to make everybody cry, but I want to make sure we're doing it. Well, and I guess two things. Jennifer Harrison at EPA is now, I guess, an environmental justice grant and has been sending a lot of information about these grants and I know has been hooked up with Christina. And so I think this group and Amanda and Beth and Charles and others have been helping make sure that that information is shared. So I think that's another benefit of just have connecting the dots. So Christine, thank you for being here and Terry for helping and anyway. Um, okay, any other, hi Thelma. Hello. Do you want to say a quick hello to the Zoom people and the room people? <laughs> Thelma <laughs> Campbell. Thelma's been up fighting the good fight for She has, she has. Yeah. Um, I'm fighting the fight of too many meetings in one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, just before we move on, um, Andrea de la Garza from the Pueblo Urban Renewal Authority was supposed to be here tonight. She got sick and so she apologizes, but we'll be here next month. So, thank yep. you. Yeah. It, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go, go ahead. Okay, Paul. Um, I just wanted to say, I think it's great that we have a new task force that's going to kind of be a clearinghouse for all the different efforts that we're making to find grant money and different uh, financial instruments to move forward our revitalization. Um, as far as urban renewal goes, a good portion of the road is left out of the urban renewal uh, process at this time because of a previous older urban renewal district that they created like 20 years ago. And it's created a, you know, a big impediment as far as the urban renewal effort goes in the road neighborhood. So, you know, we need to keep that in mind so that we can work around that in other uh, ways to provide the same opportunity for our community uh, that the uh, specimen and the playground town will get. And, you know, I'm curious as to the boundaries, because this has been some discussion earlier, the boundaries of the urban renewal and who is exactly included and who's not included. So we can make accommodations for that as we make our plans down the road. And uh, I think that's, that's it. I think that. Uh, you know, otherwise, I think it's a really good thing. I want to make sure that the task force does have a, a representative from the road on that so that we can have some voice in that. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, and yeah th thank you, Paul, for that feedback. And, you know, when we were first discussing the boundaries, the reason why they selected the Bessemer area and that northern corridor is because that's the most visibility. Um, area that they see high traffic going through there and focused even on that Macaulay exit as you come off of I-25 to go into the area because the thought process there was if we could improve this immediate strip then we would be able to have kind of our center piece and then kind of branch out in different sectors to all of the neighborhoods. And we are not specifically just sticking to the Bessemer Idlers neighborhood. We are going to go into and take the same care and consideration and devotion to each area within the Superfund site. And I, I love the idea that once we get to a specific area, if we don't have constituents on the task force, I think that's where we're gonna come back to the table. I would hope so to say, okay, who are, go to the CSRP and say, who are in these neighborhoods? What 
do we need to do to help improve those areas? Because we don't live there. So I need to have input and this task force needs to have input from the direct people who have businesses and do reside there. So I do want to hopefully reassure you, Paul, that, you know, we are going to get to each area. That's why I'm saying it's going to be like 20, 30 year process of getting there. But just because we start an urban renewal in Bessemer doesn't mean that in like four or five years, if that one's going well and we have projects planned out there, that we can't potentially open up another smaller Superfund site. Um, Pueblo Urban Renewal in discussion with the task force are the ones who developed the zone area. After this meeting, what I can do is email the um, map that's outlined currently right now for the current TIF zone um, to the group. That way you have it. It can be ever changing and it doesn't mean that it's excluded. So say like where my organization is at off of Abriendo and Canal, we're not actually in the TIF zone designated area, but because we share a boundary with the TIF zone area, we can do a little amendment to extend the TIF zone to include a certain property. So if it looks like there's an unbelievable chance that we could help tag along another project that's very very close in proximity to the current TIF zone area, that's something definitely that we'll do and be able to take um, a full look at and hopefully take advantage of that opportunity to be able to see what we can do to help improve at the end all of this area and all of the Superfund sites. Okay, so I see, Terry, you've got your hand up and I do, in the interest of time, I want to keep this moving along, but I also own in Paul's part of this again. I won Belmont too. So I actually want to make a proposal here because we didn't actually have this on the agenda because we weren't sure if Christina and Andrea could make it. But I wonder if we could schedule, we could have Andrea come and we could actually have some time to discuss this topic in a bit more detail and get input from all of you. And that was going to be one of my suggestions. Is, is I'm hoping that. Uh, we can we can get on the agenda basically have the pure task force on our agenda make a presentation to us on where they are what they're seeing so far because christine is right i mean there's a lot there's a lot of details the trouble with i've worked with these kind of projects for the last few decades the the devil is definitely in yeah. the details and if you don't think about things in advance even though you have the potential <laughs> to set a boundary and then expand it yeah it can be difficult sometimes. So the better thing to do is to make sure that you're not doing everything up front. The other thing that I want to make sure everybody knows is Pura's role will be to digest all of this information and then make a recommendation back to city council. And city council is the one that basically sets the boundaries and that sort of thing. It's a political issue. And so the ability for citizens to work closely uh, with uh, Pura and make sure that that recommendation goes in at least what we believe is, is as, as good as it can to meet our needs is extremely important. But bottom line is exactly what you had said. I definitely would love to have Pura here, make a presentation, here's where we are today, show us what the boundaries are and we'll let us give some exchange on that. Um, so Paul and Velma, do you wanna say something brief before we move on, but knowing that what you say can inform our meeting and the group. Well, I just was just a brief comment that I hope that we can utilize Pura to the greatest uh, possibility. But I would also like to think that we could use other entities and other means if they become available to us that it could operate outside the uh, the branch of Pura. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I too. I had a question about the Yeah, 
Um, just it, 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 this is all we got the ball rolling years ago with our meetings and Terry and bringing up urban renewal, and we begged to bring urban renewal to the to the conversation. The Islanders neighborhood around here. Um, and it seemed like we got it going, we had it all going fine, things were going good. And then the health department pretty well took the ability to, we were, there was a grant through the EPA. So the health department provided us basically a really good facilitator through the whole process. And she went after everything and everything was great. And then that grant went away. And literally within like a three month time, we had, uh, before begin was begin, there was two separate groups. And one of the groups was fading away and was almost, you know, in non-existence anymore. And so they folded that group into our, our original group, which was the revitalization group. And in the process, all I know is I've never been invited to another meeting once the health department went away. And I don't know if you have Paul or if Paul says he hasn't. And, Terry shaking his head either. So basically the ball that we made roll, which we're getting ready to start another uh, another ball rolling at the end of the month. I'm looking at you. I'm, I'm, I'm like, we're getting ready to start another ball rolling at the end of the month here, which is the same exact thing that started this process in the first place. And us that have been rolling down that bowling lane the whole time, we've all been we, we didn't even make it to the pins. We just got kicked into the gutter and we're kind of, I mean, that's a bad analogy, but we're no, not, I, think I, I mean, yeah. for all of that work that went, I mean, it's still, this is what the fruition is. And now all of the fruition is going towards an area that really wasn't originally in the smoke area. So, as to, far as the, to, the super fun side. Am I hearing you right that like there's an interest, and obviously I think we've heard it also just now <clears throat> from you all who were involved in the very beginnings of this to be engaged for for folks in the task force to be reaching out to the folks who were involved since the beginning and also making sure that some of these original conversations you had like intern the girl was a part of it have there's continuity and that there's not well it seems like it might be a little too late because a lot of well, decisions are already made. well and and that's where i i don't think it is so this is how the members that are involved in the task force formed according to my understanding is darina from the Pueblo City County Health Department um, still was hosting meetings with the CSRP that I think she just took over the list that she got. So I'm not sure how she got the list of who she sent out the meetings before her grant ended. She made sure to put it out there to the members of the CSRP that if they wanted to serve on this task force to please come forward. And so that's how we got community representatives from the task force. We also had to push a little bit back with Pira because Pira wanted to limit the number of people that would be on this task force. Just because um, from my understanding, they wanted to keep it more small that way they didn't have too many conflicting voices and things wouldn't get done so we were able to get um two non-voting members on that board and one of them being myself and the other one when we need him and if he's available and wants to join would be terry hart but only if you know we got to a point so as of right now i think I, the best idea would be to come together with Pura and with Jeanette Garcia, their board member who is specifically leading this task force for Pueblo Urban Renewal. I can assure you that this is on our radar now, AKA my radar. And so this is something I've been working towards for a while, not only with just the CSRP, but improvements of what we can do on our end and our immediate area. So I do apologize that if the boundaries that were originally um, identified by this task force are not conclusive in with what some other people may think that are the priorities there. So I do think that that would be a good starting point is to see, okay, what can we do to improve for the next TIF zone? Or what can we do now with this existing TIF zone since it's still in the process of going through all of that red tape? 
Um, the last thing that I'll say is that I need to jump off, um, you know, pretty quickly here because it's my husband's birthday and we have dinner plans with my parents. So I'm sorry, I won't be able to stay for the full meeting, but please feel free to share my contact information. And then I'll be more than happy to call Pura, speak with Andrea or call Jeanette tomorrow and let them know that I think they need to make it a priority to be at one of these meetings. That way we all can be on the same page. That way, like Paul says, if there's other resources out there that we don't know about, that we are able to contact them and bring them into the fold. By no means is this an exclusive group that has the final say in everything. We're just trying to see what we can do to actually get um, the TIF zone designated in the area and then start from there and seeing what we can help accomplish from that point. Okay, wonderful. Um, so thank you, Christina, and thanks for reaching out to Andrea and Jeanette. And we can talk after this meeting about whether what would be a good time and we should make sure that you know, keep Amanda Bartley close in that loop because there's going to be a meeting at the end of this month that's going to kick off the next phase for the um, that EPA and CEO are working on. So, in any case, thank you for being here to help try to connect all these dots. Yeah, no problem. And, you know, um, grab my cell phone number from Terry Hart. I have a special event at the end of this month that's our main fundraiser. And the best way to reach me now is through text message because I'm about 90 emails deep. So if you need something, text me yeah. and then I'll be able to get back right away for you. Sounds good. And Amanda, Beth, does anyone, any of you want to say anything from the EPA angle before we move on from this topic? Before we proceed? Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. Have a great dinner. Happy birthday. Okay. Thank you. And I look forward to collaborating and see what we can do to revitalize some of the topics that have been there from the beginning and bring them to fruition and see how we could all work to collaboratively together to get things done. Cool. Thank you. So all right. Much. Thank you. Bye bye. I mean, it does seem very cool in a sense because in the last couple months of last year, in this group, we were talking about what a shame it was that began funding was running out and just seeing things floundering or being worried about things floundering. So, you know, the danger is, you know, things feeling kind of like out of control and who's doing what and to, how to keep things. At least we gave our bowling ball to somebody. <laughs> I think you might be back on the bowling ball team. <laughs> I, in the 20 to 30 year, it sounds, she, she's, about, she's about as promising as final part of clarification. <laughs> Conversations. So, but it's one of the things that I definitely worry about is, uh, let's just say, it's important that we're all involved and that we help guide the decisions as best we can, at least with our recommendations. And uh, I've worked the system a lot, and that's not an easy process. And so, the best way to do it is to make sure we know everything is happening, when it's happening. And if we like it, we say so, and if we don't like it, we just say so. And if we still keep going a direction that we don't care for, uh, then we need to rep increase the sports. And uh, that's when we would talk to people that had positions like Ed used to have and, and say, Ed, we don't particularly care for this. Can you help us out? So, you know, there's ways that we can make sure we don't just sit back and things happen to us. We need to do our best to make sure it happens as without involved. And Paul, I think everyone's not going to say it. might be a reason to keep a rebound of the committee on and beyond tour. Just just so that regular members of the community that may or may not be connected to participate could still have some input at some point. Yeah, I certainly don't have and my my concern has always been to make sure no one's left out. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, is is I definitely don't want to drag along people who say, "Well, that's just not my, you know, it's not my wheelhouse." But well, well I think. I, and Paul, well, I wonder if maybe when we schedule this with Kira, this conversation, if part of one of the questions can be room for an advisory group or room for you know some way, or maybe it's beyond that process. Well, I think what you know, we as citizens are giving up quite a bit here with more any kind of. Direct participation if we're mm -hmm. passing on a <clears throat> license to represent our neighborhood to tourists. Mm -hmm. Because 
For one thing, you know, I think that there's a some disagreement as to her objective. And what her spends her money on time and what exactly is the benefit to other neighborhoods. And 20 to 30 years is way longer than people in the super fun site are, are looking at, I believe. They're, they're looking for something a little bit more within their lifetime. <laughs> Serious business and my thought right then. If somebody tells you it's going to be 20 or 30 years, you need to streamline for them to say, no, we got to find a way to do it today. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what I, I worry about is, is making sure that whatever the plan is, it's what the citizens want. And that idea originated here. We've got neighborhood associations and everything else that should be heavily involved in this kind of thing. And all three of our neighborhoods have been equally impacted. Yeah. And despite the, the best uh, intentions of her, it's going to be directed at one spot or another. It's not really going to benefit the rest of the impacted neighborhood. Which is, it, oh, it, I think that it may be but I think that we should, you know, explore that carefully so that we make sure that you say that it's equitable and that everybody feels included. Yeah. yeah. I, if it's okay, I mean, so are you all, do you like the idea of inviting Christina and Elena to a February tag or an upcoming tag and having a longer conversation and sharing the notes and tenor of the conversation and comments? Does that work? Yeah, it, it's kind of weird the way it happened, but that was the idea was when this task force, we've been pushing for yeah. Sarah to do something. So they created this task force, asked for some ideas on who would be on it, and it came, some of the suggestions uh, came from the begin group. And so then Sarah specifically selected who they wanted on the group, uh, which I personally have problems with, but that's the way it was done. So bottom line is, is is Christina a perfect person to be part of our group to help us work our way through this? Yeah. Okay. Well, so we went way over on that because we weren't sure if those, if Christina and Andrea were going to be here, but it seemed like it needed to happen because there's going to be this upcoming conversation very soon. And so, anyway, thanks everyone. I think one of the things is adjusting these agendas to make room for conversations that seem timely and need to happen so i hope that is okay um i would love with everyone's willingness to move on so the other two big things we really need to do tonight at tonight's meeting one is to hear an outlook from epa about what can be for 2024 and the other is to go to look at the click dashboard which is i think an exciting new tool and we want to make sure that epa gets your input so can we go to the site outlook first okay and I did hear, see a note from Janine that it's a little hard to hear the owls. So when people speak, we, I may ask you to speak up, but just please try to remember that. And to look at the owl. I know it's like you can't go to look at other people, but try to like talk to the wall first. Talk to the machine. Yeah. Sure. Wow. Well, <laughs> so this is my section. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. Okay, are we? Yeah, yeah, okay, great. All right, you go, Beth. All right, Car okay, Eric, Carl, you got it? Yes, sorry. sorry. Um, so we usually go through. So just since it is January 2024, we wanted to give kind of an outlook of what we are expecting to happen this upcoming year. And with all of our timelines, they are up for, they can change. So take all this for your account, as we always say. I know it's challenging, but that's kind of how things happen and they evolve. But what we're looking at now, so we have been, oh, do we want to change the meeting so we work on that? Yeah, I'll keep on. Okay. Zoom. It looks, it looks oh, fun. I love it. Well, uh, can y'all still see it? <laughs> and also on my screen, <laughs> showing that that. Um, oh, that is a bummer. Uh, can we go to display settings? Maybe you can duplicate it up at the top uh, in the middle. Display settings. 
this is how many have actually who needed cleanup. Yes. So the move, we saw 43% ish that approximately that needed a soil cleanup, and then 35% of the neighborhood that needed a cleanup. And early days, I don't know if okay. folks remember, but early days when we were in the and, and doing cleanup closer to the smelter footprint, we were close to 50% looking like they needed a soil cleanup, closer to 40, 44% or so that looked like they needed a direct cleanup. But as we move away from where that staff was affecting things with fallout, um, we're seeing this number decrease. Thank you. Good question. Um, on OU1, so again, OU1, I'm sorry. So OU1 is operable unit. Um, so our emergency unit, operable unit one is broken into residential and commercial property. So the commercial property sampling is continuing. I think Beth is pausing to make sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're going to go. Um, so commercial sampling is expected to continue. We've made some pretty good progress on that. I, oh, Paul was your hand up and I didn't notice before I kept going. Oh, that's okay. I just had one question about soil cleanup. Yeah. Um, on the properties like Harris property that are kind of marginal and undecided, have you guys made any determination about those that you're going to stay in all you want? Or? So let me clarify a little bit when I say residential properties. So these residential properties are residential properties where people are actively living because that's what's been covered under the interim record of decision. So that universe of numbers that I just described does not include properties where people are not actively living with the most of properties. Do you anticipate making uh, an urbanization of those properties before the March end date? I expect that they'll be in a different task order because again, these are focused on properties where people are living, and then that universe of properties will be covered under the final record of decision because we are trying to focus on the worst first property where people are actively being exposed to that contamination and could be interacting with it. Aside, so aside from the, the larger flat areas that we're hoping to get done before March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are some people living over there, right? In the in the hotel. And the yeah, the, the, I think the. The parcels that are sort of up that we're trying to, to figure out some more detail on are the sloped areas associated to um, Mr. Olmsted and Herrick's property. Uh -huh. And we are planning to address the flatter areas that we can access. And we're working with the property owners and some adjacent property owners as well to help us with any ingress. Are those all being tested? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so those got tested, and then um, the slope pieces were working with us for our more design work. And so that we're still at the beginning phase with the core looking at the right contract vehicle to get more design work on the slope property. Well, I just heard something sound about clear letters or some sort of indemnification for people that can move out of where you want. You know, I mean, if the property isn't cleaned up and it's left in or some sort of uh, unfinished status. And to some clarification as to what the status is of that is for people on the you know estate transactions or whatever they can. What I can add to that, Paul, is like at least from my perspective, I've been involved in a, or people I'm supposed to be the person people reach out to when they're in a real estate transaction. So typically what we do is we write a property status letter that says here's what EPA has done, here's what EPA is able to do. And so I believe that the I know it's been super helpful for realtors. So those properties, I think, would be covered under that thing. Like, we could write those letters and make sure those are available to people. Even if you're partially cleaning up the property, though? Mm -hmm. yeah. We can, at least we can we can state what we know about the property and what we're able to say. And what the statement might be, we need to further evaluate, right? But we're able to still provide that information. Did we got the comp? Didn't we get the uh, Army Corps of Engineers? Did we get them a, a crew contract to look into? They've got an interagency agreement in place, but they've got to get a separate work order with the contractor, and that is going to be a competitive process. So we don't have a contractor on board to do the Yeah, but that's yet. the interagency agreement, like first kind of yeah. initial yeah. step to get to that, where we're going to move forward with it. Right. But then we have to see, like, how big do they think the work is? Do we need to bolster some of the existing resources we have on that interagency agreement? And we'll know more as we keep. Working forward. So that's those pieces aren't done. I don't know, Sarah, don't want to put that on the spot, but if there's an 
No, I, I was just, at, at our steering committee meeting, just came up uh, our property and those other properties in the same situation. Yeah. And I just wanted to address it here at the tag meeting so that you know, we could have some clarification for each other. And it sounds like then to me the flat areas are being able to be, because I remember you, there was. We we'll have a lower flat area that's bigger than the upper flat areas, and it sounds like they're not going to do the, the lower flat area, just the upper flat area. So that's the that's why I have four acres. I don't know that that seems to be as clean as if you're just cleaning up a quarter of an acre. Right. Four acres. Right. So that's kind of where we can get it all on, on the record. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, Paul, for bringing that up. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. And I just to the next slide right here on the work post that we need one law because those properties that are more like unique circumstances, special circumstances, would be covered under the final only one law where that interim record of decision was focused on these properties that are like single family homes, people are within, you know, trying to address the work with initially. So the study area boundary has been finalized. I know a lot of y'all have heard that we've kind of bumped it out in the past couple of years looking at the evidence where we've seen elevated lead and arsenic. And so we finally have a, finally, but we have like a final study area boundary that is, because we've been calling it the study area for so long, but now it is the boundary for the site. So that's really great. And that is going to help us as we move forward and we look at institutional control. We've been having conversations with the city and what their role is going to be in that. And so having that final study area boundary is going to help us in the city develop those institutional controls to make sure that the work that we've done remains protected into the future. So again, institutional controls, I see, sorry for all the acronyms, but they've been identified and we're working on implementing the institutional controls to keep the area protected. So that's kind of continuing to come up. I think we've been talking about it for a while and we're getting closer as we get closer to finishing residential work to implementing those institutional controls. And I see Sarah who is with the state nodding. So that's where we're at with that. Um, EAS flag is electric arc furnace flag. So this has been sold by um, oh, man. by the steel mill, the Everest steel mill, and um, EPA evaluated it because we saw it in yards as we were doing residential cleanups and we wanted to understand the, what the risks are with using it in people's yards. So un unencapsulated, not, not contained uses in residential yards. So EPA kind of went to the National Academies of Science and Medicine and we were like, hey, can you evaluate what this material is, what the risks are? They did a thorough evaluation and their report was not as helpful as I hoped it would be. It stated that further research is needed to understand what the risks are because there are different types of electric arc furnace flags. So they made several recommendations to understand different research needs. Some of those include like understanding chemical composition of different types of flag, how the organic pollutants may break down over time, um, long-term health effects from the high pH, which is associated with this, bioavailability over time, and then um, just toxicity associated with the material. So lots of things to look at what would be needed to understand this material further. So from EPA side, we are still recommending that folks avoid contact with the material. Like, uh, more than necessary, like please don't like pick it up and like eat it, obviously. But since we are still trying to understand <laughs> what how it can be safely used, if it is on a yard that needs yeah. a cleanup with the super fun site, we're going to remove the material and then replace it with like a clean backfill. So we're not going to replace it with the flag. But if it is in a yard that does not qualify for a super fun cleanup, we're leaving it and we're left it and maybe that folks leave it in place. We've got that fact sheet that has the same best practices for how to reduce exposure to lead, like wash your hands after you interact with it, try to minimize inhalation to the dust. So that it's <coughs> we have the report, so now we know that, but on our end, we're trying to figure out what our next steps are. So we're continuing to work with our state and local health departments to figure out what next steps are, what needs to be evaluated. Because we know that y'all have been asking about it and then want to understand it further. And we as an agency share that goal of understanding what Needs to happen. Yeah, just as a reminder, I think uh, a few years back, one of the ways it came up was that <laughs> there were some folks, residences, 
who had this and wanted it replaced, mm -hmm. right? So so they had it as driveway or landscaping material. Yeah. And I think that's you know oh, that's how it came off. Yeah. Is because some residents asked yeah. for it to be replaced. Well, yeah, and I think the the basic I mean that that's that's really good step to have taken. The response is not terribly surprising. There were so many people on this report. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, and and you know, I mean, sort of, it sort of reflects what what is it, what's already known. Um, there is information about the. Um, um, the Everest um, and CFNI flag, what, what type of flag it is. Yeah. Um, but I think the basic message is, as you pointed out, it's not particular, no form of, of field making flag is actually good for you. Mm -hmm. and, and it can contain toxic materials and the practice of selling it or giving it to people to use for schools and residences and stuff like that is pretty much falling into disrepute. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's outside of yards that qualify for cleanup, I think that's going to be one of those legacy problems that our public health community inherits here in Pueblo. And I think Velma, that's that's well stated. Um, <clears throat> at EPA, like our recommendations have not changed to minimize contact with it, try not to interact with it, but we are continuing to look at it. We're really aware of this issue and we want to yeah. continue like it's still on our radar, we're having discussions about it. So yeah. as we have any new recommendations or if we do decide to recommend that people do remove it safely, like if we have changes to that, I'll come back to that and give you yeah, you know, I think from an environmental justice standpoint, if, if EPA and CDPAG develop programs that might be relevant to the study of the extent of the problem and cost of remediation for Pueblo, that's something that there are a lot of us who would be interested in, yeah. in hearing more about. <clears throat> All right, and then um, we added into the cooperative agreement with the public health department. And I realized that we added this to the slide on optical you know, even though it is more site wide. But I wanted to turn to my friends at the public health department and see if y'all wanted mm -hmm. to talk about what this interagency agreement means for us. Yeah, so it means that we're going to be able to continue our uh, blood blood testing, our home screening in the neighborhood, and we'll also expand out. <coughs> Our training of what we what we're doing at the health department to um, reach out and do more outreach just in uh, lab in general to the entire population. So um, it's continuing our our project and also uh, being able to work with the OUP and people uh, that are uh, homeless in that area. And we've all also we, we know we're going to be doing some testing on them. So. Um, We'll see if they're going to cooperate and be able to see what kind of uh, lead exposure they're getting. We did test one person that had some time down there, not living down there, but spending time down there. Uh, they came up leaded, so it is uh, you know, a possible situation that we'll be going with going forward. So we're making our plans now for our outreach and our, our testing. Eight. Okay. Seven more Seven. Mm -hmm. 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 Okay. Um, we go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, looking at operable unit two, we are continuing to sample. So um, the little chart over to the left shows a summary of samples that were collected in 2023. And I know I think I've mentioned it to you all, but I'll just flag it again. We have all these like web tools that we've been working on. One of them is called a story map and kind of a map or 
a hopefully more interactive website that shows what we've been doing at the site. And so one of the components that we're trying to put together for Operable Unit 2 specifically is a map that shows where the sampling locations are for all the different um, materials like surface water, ground water, all that stuff. So I just worked up, or I worked with one of my colleagues on this map. So I think we're hoping to have that out here within this year as well so that you guys can see that stuff more easily. But we are looking at a baseline ecological risk assessment. So this is one of the first types of risk assessments that we do, looking at how um, plants and animals can be affected by this area. Um, we're continuing groundwater monitoring. We're looking at commercial properties within OE2 and getting those scheduled for sampling, so separate from the one property. Monitoring wells will continue to be installed as boreholes for soil sampling. And then a draft, so after we have all of the data collected, it's going to be rolled together into what's called a remedial investigation report. So we're trying to work up that draft report this year, draft the human health risk assessment. So it's the ecological risk assessment first, human health. And then, sorry, I'm like choking on my accent. <laughs> 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 doing great. <laughs> Uh, so then, as I think we are all very aware of, we have the future work session in uh, this, this month, January 31st, and then having a visioning session following that, I believe, in the spring. So we're continuing to have discussions on redevelopment and look at what, I'm looking at Amanda, and she loves it, uh, <laughs> what's going to be happening for how that land can be used, keeping in mind that it is publicly owned or um, privately owned, not publicly owned, uh, but looking at what the future uses are because that helps us understand when we, after we finish the remedial investigation, then we finish a feasibility study that looks at what the universe of cleanup options are, and then we look at what we want to, or what EPA proposes as a cleanup option, we put that out to the public and having information on what the potential land uses are or like the proposed land uses are that helps us final or like refine our cleanup idea. So, Amanda, did I cover off of one minute too? Yeah, yeah, and I can talk a little bit more about um, the purpose of this work session that we're hoping to hold um, January 31st. Um, so we're really looking for the property owners to share their ideas and their goals on future use of the property. Um, we want the participants and the community members to understand um, the local land use considerations from uh, city officials and whatever zoning requirements there are. Um, we want to discuss um, the other partnerships that we have in the community for revitalization to help uh, reach the community goals and also discuss the role of EPA within um, future reuse and also the city's role in uh, future use as well. And then um, just overall considerations of what the community wants to see for reuse as well. So that's really the, the main purpose of this meeting that we're having uh, at the end of the month. Thank you so much. And I realize we can't see the folks online right now, but that's yeah. also something. Okay, so Kev, Kevin, let's go to you. And also, I'm wondering if we can take this down so that we can see if the folks are online. I'm monitoring. There's no. Oh, there's been no. no okay, answers. thank you, Vinny. Yeah. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Um. Kevin. Oh, the running and light area is that considered to be too much? Oh, you yeah. Yeah. Um. Does anyone else have questions, comments about this? Um. And I think there's there is one more slide. Is there? Yeah, but it's a slide we all have seen before. We already talked about the slope property, so I think it's kind of a review. So go ahead, please. Yeah, Kevin just uh, reminded me that I've been wanting to ask um, whether the um, uh, ecological study includes um, whether there's any impact on the fish in the lake. And, and if that the impact does it make them edible or not? Right. So that's definitely one of the reasons why we're collecting fish samples and aquatic invertebrate samples. So once we collect, we actually haven't gotten all the data back from that biota sampling yet. So once we do get all that data back, that's kind of what a lot of this year is going to be, a lot of data consolidation, data interpretation, and putting that into those reports and getting it out 
to you all, so you can have that information. So um, once you do, you'll definitely have a better understanding of um, the fish and how the, the contamination is affecting the product. Oh. You said was that done by the state? The sampling? Yeah. No. So EPA has a contractor that does all of our sampling. And with the lake? Yep. We did the Arkansas one? River, South Lee Lake, mm -hmm. and um what's the other one? Runyon? Runyon Lake. In Sutton Creek. So Creek and Runyon. So the state just got done when you'll miss that camera. I don't know if you were aware of that. They they it's been about six weeks. They ran two separate field net tests, one on two on Fountain Creek Lake, two on Runyon Lake. Saw them pull them up, but they didn't look really crude. But they stopped it about a month ago, right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't know if there were different people doing the testing. Yeah, separate. So the last one is just looking at kind of again what I verbally said when Paul raised it about the interim record of decision and those properties that are sloped and considered more technically complex. So what we were focusing on in the interim record of decision when we first were looking at coming down and dropping the rest of the super pump site was to focus on properties with residents and then kind of prioritize that immediate risk to exposure to smelter related contamination. And then we will reevaluate all of the data from all of the unit ones when we do have that final record of decision. And the, I, as I talked about earlier, like this is kind of the, the remedial process where we gather information, the remedial investigation and feasibility study. So that is all the data that we have and the cleanup options that are available. Then it goes into a proposed plan, which is where EPA says how we would propose to clean it up. And that is where we receive a public comment so that. As we stated, that process will happen again with the record decision. Then it will become the final decision document, which gives the EPA the authority to do the work. Then it'll go into the design process and the actual action. So, so the, the big thing, too, is what we kind of just mentioned at the end that Sabrina mentioned. So that last, when you see the slow particle consideration, you know, second last bullet was, you know, remedial design needed with different We'll be able to get that approval, and that's that next bill. We'll be able to get the approval for the board that's going to be required to go in and actually look at what's going to be needed there. So that's kind of, we wanted a placeholder for this, but that's kind of a big takeaway, reminding everybody where we're in the process and then kind of what we've done since we've seen it last. And, you know, that is a big thing if we got support for you know, all the of engineers to start looking at what they would actually need to go in and, and clean up the rest of the property. That's great. Thanks, too. And then the last thing that is not on any of the slides, but I think I might have mentioned, and I'll just, it's a short little thing in passing, but it won't be a short thing to actually execute. So we have the community involvement plan that y'all are familiar with, and I think it's officially five years old, and so that means that EPA is going to reevaluate it. And the fact that it has been five years since we last did it means that we're in a different stage of the process. We're spending more time looking at possible unit two, we're kind of wrapping up on residential stuff. So looking, re-looking at that community involvement plan, kind of drafting up a new plan, doing interviews and understanding how we can best communicate to people. Do we need to pass a broader net of folks who should be in the community advisory group meetings now that we have a different, we're starting to shift away, well, not, we're not done with residential yet by any means, but we're starting to shift towards possible unit two. So looking at our communication strategies, do we need to update that? So that's going to be happening this year as well. And we will all be hearing much more from you. So. Well, and just a quick note that when we talked, the steering committee members and I about earlier this past year about who else, like are the key groups missing from these conversations, who would you want to see more involved, by far you all are saying city in terms of leadership, so who you want to have most engaged. But then you were also saying there's other recreational stakeholders and others who would benefit, it would be good to have them at the table, and I think this effort is probably a way to also to help the context and the folks and understand as needed. Huh? So I think that's it for me. Because I really want to save some time to go through this um this dashboard. Great. So anyone online want to chime in any questions before we are gonna shift to looking um taking a deeper dive at the residential tracking tool. 
But before we do any other, okay, I don't see any. All right, so just a reminder, um, and this, you know, Kevin, I don't know that you probably haven't heard about this yet, but as part of, there have been long conversations in this group about how, what are going to be the best ways to track which residential properties have needed cleanups, which properties have been cleaned up for future real estate purposes, for rent, you know, property value development purposes. And so this is a pretty state-of-the-art new tool that EPA has developed that answers some of these questions because it allows anybody to pull up a property and find out its status. And so it hasn't been rolled out yet, but I think you all are on the cusp of that. So do you want to? It's been shared with the CAD. Right, and right. The not the, like but yeah, publicly. not widely rolled out. So Sydney, do you want to <clears throat> say anything more about it before you dive in? Um, no, I think you guys should have all seen this before. I did hear some of y'all's feedback, and I hope um, the person who helped develop this. Um, anyways, I just want to get like one foul swoop of every what everyone wants. Um, so, and I had mentioned to Sydney, so we had a steering committee meeting in December, and all of the steering committee members, Herrick, Velma, Paul, and Terry, I think, all said that you were finding the map hard to pull out and see and that the pie charts were taking up more room than you were so Sydney knows about that yeah okay so I guess let's stop. thank you for that reminder so I guess the first thing was I if you guys want to maybe elaborate on what you were saying with the um with these maps right here so I guess from my understanding you we were asking if it could be pulled to turn it full page um I guess my question with that was what particularly were you trying to do that for? Like, is there a way that I can maybe work? And before we do that, I wonder if we want to share the link so that people with laptops can pull it up. Like, yeah, I can drop that in there. Yeah. <laughs> do you, that's the easier. Or you guys, okay. Yeah. Are you, are the people here with their computers logged into this room? We're over here in Rampart. We're not the if you guys log into this Zoom, it's just really, it's overall, it's really hard to navigate and to, um, because the, the items on the page are not individually, um, yeah, you can't click on them and bring them to the forefront and, and some of the entries are very small. Mm -hmm. And so, like for instance, where it says soil um, status, mm -hmm. is that, yeah. Um, you, you can, if you, if you mouse over the map, nothing happens. Okay, so. And, and, first... and if you click on the, on the graphics, then, Bigger. Right. Okay. So, like here for soil status, if you're doing cleanup complete, and yeah, so if you click on it, it really just shows you. I guess. Yeah. The, the thing with this is the original function for this was really so that when this project is completed and it and other people can search, you know, for y'all. Also for the state in terms of like ICs on properties, if there's transactions um, later on of people selling their homes and you want to look things up, it wasn't really intended as much to be a map. So I guess like in terms of being able to zoom in on stuff, is where you this physical address bothers for. So the idea is more, it's geared more towards looking when you have an individual property and you want to check its status as opposed to getting a bird's eye view. It's not really like, a, yeah, it's not. So there is like this cleanup status complete, right? Showing you that we have 38% of this entire pie chart of the universe of things is 38% of the entire home tested was 38% of them have cleanup completed. And here, like for this, the entire universe, 53% of the homes tested didn't need a cleanup. So in terms of the pie chart, that was for more holistic things. 
in same with I think the map. What the map was more intended for is that if you're looking at the physical address right here, uh, let's just click on a random one like one or three. It, so I think one of the issues is like what the smaller <clears throat> we're not able to like you can't search for it. Okay, so this is zoomed in more than a hundred. So that's the problem is that if you're zoomed in too much. Does it naturally when you open it up zoom you into it? So sorry, it is way 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 to fire. Sorry to keep on the Zoom because this is going to be sort of a work session and yeah. it'll be a little hard to follow. But yeah, no, I mean, yeah i mean does anyone have like generic questions that i can answer and if we're in a work session like this then i'm not going to like just stop it's just the same like you know, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Can we can we I, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Charles? So Amanda and Charles, I'm wondering if you all can we pause you all real quick and go to Sydney and then maybe we break into Yeah, if maybe we talking. can do that. Because I, I think I get I understand the question, but the thing is that like uh I can't change the way that this platform is to like to display differently, really. I mean, I it it'd be opening up a million different tabs, and I don't. Then it wouldn't be user friendly at all. Like no one would understand how to get anywhere. So, I understand that, but I mean, the premise of this was to look up specific properties, and when you look up a specific property, it zooms to where that property is, and like show um. And then like if you click on this next tab that goes to soil, it zooms in and gives you like an actual GIS layer with the satellite view of it. It tells you where we sampled at what depth and what that average was, if it needed a cleanup, where it was exceeded. Um, I can work on this display aspect so you can actually see what this is. And then the description of like, BL meaning basement, BY is backyard. Like it's all here. And I do understand that it's hard on a smaller screen. I'm not really sure how that could be remedied just because of the amount of information. Like even if we took out, so first off, I don't want to take out the pie charts because that's, you know, I think that's valuable information also for the reason of why this dashboard was developed. I think the pie charts are a necessary piece and it's very helpful. Like you could do cleanup complete. And then if you click over on soil, it shows you all of those parcels that and that required a cleanup and each individual level of detail if you wanted that. Um, Paul, I know you started asking a question. Yeah, so I think it's a really useful tool. You know, you are that critical, really. Um, just that you ask for feedback. Definitely. <laughs> no, no, no. I no, and I appreciate that. I'm just trying to figure out ways to like. There's only certain things that I can do with it, and like I definitely understand the map. So maybe if there's a way that I can get, um, that I can get when it's showing all of it. Well, if, your, if I can get this to like pop out as another screen, possibly maybe that would at least maybe be helpful for y'all to be able to zoom in because you can zoom in. It's just again, it's so small. You, and your your demonstration and the main though, so it's just showing me kind of close up how to do. I was actually part of my problem with it was that I was I had the impression, the erroneous impression. <laughs> so I was actually trying to access that information by mapping over the properties on the map. Oh, yeah, and, no, that would be and, horrible. And the terrain, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I did hear that you guys like here where it says search for PC code obviously isn't very helpful for y'all. So I'm going to see if I can change this to search for physical address. And then that way, because you can do it's it. It's still there. Yeah, I mean, it's still right here. If you click on this aspect of it, the drop down menu is there. Um, we have done it as PC code because in the universe that we're working in with the contractors and the state and everything like that, we search by PC code. Um, so maybe because this is the public facing one, I can see if I can change that to be an address search instead. Um, and it just seems like it grabs it. everything. So if you put it in, does. like, you know, I think yeah, the one that came up the other day is 508 Hill. It'll look right. for all 508 and everything on Hill. So, um, so, so do, you, do you mind, like, showing us, like, search, for example, property, and then we can all do that, like, search for property? Because I think that it, would that be helpful for folks so we can all, like, I think it would be helpful because sometimes it, it, you get a list with a bunch of green checks next to it, and if you yeah. really want to focus on one property, you've got to X out all the other yeah. check so, marks and focus on So, like, that. Hill is a street, right? And so, like, it automatically pulls up all of these. And so if you want to just look at the entire street. Could you 721? I own that one. So 721 Hill? Yeah. So everyone look up 721 Hill. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. So here, when you search Hill in general, sorry, let me just back up for one second. When you search Hill in general, it will pull up all of them. And if you want to see the whole street, then like you click on them as you go. But since Eric generously showed us this, we'll click on just 721 Hill hit the check mark and see how it this is your main page so it's going to still have the pie chart it's going to have this but no cleanup was required right so but if you go to the soil tab it actually zooms in to give you that satellite layer and show you exactly what your results were within zero to one inches one to six six to twelve twelve to eighteen for both arsenic and lead which is the contaminants of our concern Mm -hmm. um, so one thing too is that you don't have to double click. You just click once on 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 the whole web page, and that that initiates the initial app. Mm -hmm. So if you select a property, just click it once. You don't need to double click it. Just select it. That you'll get that green check mark of of success. Mm -hmm. So then you check yes on the top, and that will do it for you. And I think like at the double, like just to make sure you're looking at the right thing, right here, the second tab right here, it's showing you the physical address that you're looking at, right? And so, like, I also just clicked on the duck tab, and now you can see that, like, Eric lot us inside his home to test and make sure that, like, the dust samples are appropriate and don't need a cleanup. And so we can see that. The well, basement well. looks really scary for lead, correct? Yeah. Um, yes. It's a, no, it's not. Under, it's, under dust, yeah. Yeah. It's a non-living, but yeah. Yeah. We so. That's interesting. It's got to ingress. It's got to, it's got, I've got to walk out the door to leave the basement. So, so part of, part of that, no, that's a good point to bring up. And I do, I'm glad you said that. Is that like, we do have these cleanup criteria here on the cleanup criteria page that also shows y'all in large, like what the color scheming is. Um, and like here, Cleanup required is anywhere that arsenic is above a thousand or lead above nineteen eighteen, right? So it kind of tells you why we've chosen each color scheme and whether or not it requires a cleanup. I can maybe try and do that here for dust. It's three hundred and fifty for lead or two hundred and seventy-five. So yeah, compare. Outside. No, this is for that. I know, but I'm just saying that's the same level you have for outside. No, the so, so soil in the basement we compared to the soil number for outside, and then the dust is that 275 is lower number. Yeah, yeah but um, is or or I guess this person exactly realizes the website, so that it triggers my dad. Um, are are all basements? Regarded as non living areas? Not necessarily. Okay. So the, the contractor tries to ask questions as they're preparing for the sampling to make sure that they characterize areas appropriately. I just wanted to put the basement 
for the two blue and blue. Yeah, and then they could be like living something more. Oh, it's not like that. Sorry, that's just yeah. Yeah, it's a finished face. Yeah, it's a it's a finished face with the with the with the with an actual hot that's coming from the outside. Uh, does it have a bedroom in it? It seems like yeah, and they use it. You know, like bedrooms got a closet. And then it's uh, a. And it's got access too. So, so I mean, if I was listing my house for sale, I would definitely list it in the room. Mm -hmm. and it would add value to the house. Yeah. I'm just curiosity. I... Before you click, sitting. Yeah, sorry. I thought you were going to click. One of the things I struggled with was how to get from here back to the main map. And I saw you a couple times. You went up to do it. Could you show? Oh yeah. So if you're done looking at this property and you just want to see holistically everything again or clear your search, you can just hit this physical address right here and it clears your selection field. This is an announce, like zoom out completely to everything. Mm -hmm. But it basically, because I no longer selected that particular property, now we're looking at every single dust ever taken. I'm going to put us back to like the main homepage of property. I know it seems simple, but I no. It, 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 these are questions I've been working with this dashboard for right. so long that I just like some of it <laughs> seems like intuitive to me because I've just been doing it for so long. That's why I was like definitely soliciting the feedback and like something of like searching for the PC code. You search by PC code. Y'all are not going to search that way. So like possibly changing this to physical address, and then like I don't. I'm not positive that this can turn into a pop-out, but I will see. Um, but at least now you know you don't have to like zoom in to try and find. You yeah. can like this, but that's like so cumbersome. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't I know if I've done it before, but earlier when we were, it would let you pull the map up higher, not let, let like the whole map, the whole page would move up with the map. I Yeah, for some reason it's not like I know. Not doing it. So when you do that, it makes that map more yeah. usable. And it wasn't doing it when they used the computer. Yeah. Like See, sometimes it, yeah. Um, but these are the only things I can look at. I mean, if they, I can see if they can pop it out, but I will say the easier way to do it is to search by the physical address right here. I, and also, I know that on like if your screen is smaller, it's frustrating, but the best way to be able to see it is like to zoom out, right? So, like, the more that I zoom out of the actual web page, the more you're seeing of all of this. So that's just something I can't control. That like mm -hmm. I like my web pages zoomed in too, so I'm not purchasing it stuff. But I think if if like with the default of a hundred, like you can't really tell what's going on here, which is very unfortunate. But I don't think that there's a way. So I zoom it to ninety, and then at least I can start seeing something. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe that's something I can look at too, because when we develop this, it's on we're working on like our mm -hmm. our. our our screen at work. Um, so maybe if I can set the web page to be a little bit smaller, but I can't promise about that. But it's knowing not. this, it would also help. Yeah, and that's why it was definitely like I need people to be like working with it because like when I'm at home and when I'm working with the person developing this, like we're working on 32 inch screens and everything like looks great. And then when you come onto a laptop or a tablet or something smaller, it's like, Oh shoot! This isn't working correctly, and it's too hard to understand uh, what's going on. So Nancy, Nancy, do you have a comment? No, I just you probably won't be able to answer this, but possibly would it be would we be able to just have one map and then filter it to show either soil or dust, and then the same for like arsenic or lead instead of having two separate maps take up you know most of the page? Is that too many layers and would it cause issues with loading it? Um, so you're saying like remove this and then just make this map wider? Right. Just say like lizard control, lizard page. Right. We're going to the toggle, the toggle I don't between. Can, I don't know if you can toggle between dust. soil and dust, but we could. I think that we would we could be able to take this dust map out, but then I'm scared that when we went to the dust itself, it would no longer be linked. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot. <laughs> can you stack one on top of the other? Like as a layer? That's what I'm wondering. I'm not sure. There's so many things competing there. I mean, not even as a layer. Like you go further down the page, and there's. Just... Oh, you're saying instead of having them side by side, yeah. like change the layout of the web page. Mm -hmm. I think that could probably be an easier fix. 
I don't know why it's not letting me fall, but y'all should be able to fall. No, no, no. 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 I don't know. Never scrolled. Scroll. It never scrolled for me. Right. Oh, interesting. <laughs> It scrolls on my This is exactly why I need it. Okay, so maybe maybe that's the better solution here because having instead of getting rid of one, because having them side by side is just having them toggle. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So what I'm hearing right now, the main things are possibly change this PC code to say physical address. Um, change these to be stacked so that they can be a little bit bigger. Um. And then is there any like anything else that's jumping out super really unusual friendly? Yeah. No, not an issue with it. Um do you guys have a timeline and that would be live for the public? So we were planning on releasing it like by the end of this month. Um the person who developed this is no longer in our in Colorado. She's now like working for our San Francisco office. So she's agreed to continue helping develop this until like we can get these last little things worked out. But yeah, I am hoping to get this off by like, the end of the month. So that's why like any and all feedback. Um these are these are more coding issues than like search issues. So before we weren't releasing it because there were issues of like you know, when someone was renting a home, it wasn't matching up properly with the address. So those were things we didn't want it to be released for. Things like this were purely cosmetic. I think I'm okay with releasing because the data is correct. And I think it'll be helpful. And, you know, I'm once it goes live, it's not just like, once it goes out to the general public, it's not to say that if you guys find things that are like super not user friendly, that I can't try and go and fix that stuff. I just, wanted all of the data to be correct and like the main aspect of it for y'all to understand and make sure it's showing like what you wanted for it um so i'm hearing that it's kind of doing that but just some minor changes that make sense completely to me i just need to work with the person who posed to get that email and sydney i think people in general yeah up. Um, cool. really yeah helpful. and i hope this is helpful what's really cool like even with this cleanup required one like when you can, I don't know why it's flipping, but like when you can scroll over, it even tells you like Haga is a play area, garden area. So it tells you like this was the only part that needed the cleanup here. Or if there's other ones like here, this says we removed soil to 12 inches. We removed soil to 18 inches. So it does give you like a good granularity that I think people would really appreciate. I do just from a science background, I think that's cool mm -hmm. to see. Um, and then also like I know you guys were asking questions about like percentages of refusals or stuff like that. That's in this pie chart, right? So like here in death sampling, 10% of the people have refused to let us go inside their home and sample, right? And for soil samples, we've got it only 52 parcels that have said no, and that's 2.5% of the universe of all houses in here saying no, you can't sample my soil. So I like the pie charts for that aspect of it too. And it's kind of cool. Like if you click on this, if you guys want to go harass your neighbors, I'm just kidding, do not do that. Um, but it, it does show you like, hey, like these addresses won't let us come and sample. So if you guys like are super interested and you know people who live here, like if you want to talk to them and be like, hey, you know, this is a good idea to get your yard sampled. I see that you haven't, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying it's fun to like fun to like play around in because you do see like the universe that we've been working in for you know X amount of years that you guys have been asking to see. And so I do hope that this is like helpful to y'all and that you do like the tool. It's just it does load weird and and I'll have to just look at the format of it. So maybe I'll start pulling this up on my laptop more often to just make sure that it, like maybe if I can zoom the whole page down to 90%, so that at least when you open it, it looks more like this instead of like that. Even that I think would be helpful a little bit more. Sydney, can I pause a minute? Because it's either five, uh, no, oh, that is that. That was just me putting it. Oh, great. <laughs> I was just worried. That, okay. Um, Thank you so much. Do people have other final comments or questions? 
And if y'all have like, sorry, if y'all have like specific questions that you're like, I can't figure out how to do this one thing, like just shoot me an email and I can like hop on a call with y'all and try or like, you know, like and just try and walk you through that aspect of it because it it is like it's until you're in it a lot, that's with any web page or any like technology, like it's it's hard to figure out. So I'm more than happy to help you guys like to hop on like a Zoom or a Teams or something and kind of walk you through. And if it's something I can't figure out either, like I need to know that, right? And so that I can bring it back and be like, what's going on? Why can't I figure this out either? So and so I assume people can get your email before they leave or feel free yeah. to email Beth or me, text us, text me. Well, we'll have to note the, the, the link. link again. So yeah. buried always. I think we can put it in the notes as yeah. well. Yep, and yeah. I am happy to, I, I'll put it in the notes and I can send it to you all on the steering committee again. Would that be helpful? Yeah. Okay. One more thing. I would love to do it on our website. Okay. Um, to the, like a link to it. Right? Once it goes public, right? Yeah. 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 When you guys give us the green light. Yeah. 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 So okay. once we release it, we'll send out an email to y'all. Yeah. Be like, all right, it's out. And that's okay, y'all. Perfect. Well, and that I, might be a big push, too, to get people to yeah. pressure their neighbors. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> that didn't come on me. Yeah, but I think it's going to make you so. I think Sabrina maybe don't maybe I don't get this. Right. I, I would love to know I'll be like, but um to have some redundancy so, and sometimes good. people get frustrated with the EPA page if we're still yeah. able to so share good. things with the state page yeah. and exit to the state, also exit to local. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So I I think I mean what that we got the approval of the public facing, so I I don't see why you guys wouldn't be able to put it on your respective pages so that people don't have to be like going through the email. Well, and maybe in February we can have a short agenda item just to, since at that point it will be public, mm -hmm. maybe brainstorm if there's other places you all can see it would be useful to publicize it. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll just put that on the agenda as a second. Yeah. And I know if all of you volunteer to like send it out to your network of people, then we'll be getting out to real okay. mm -hmm. So when we do roll it out, yeah. um, I, I want to just get it as like mm -hmm. far and wide as we can. Okay, I'll put that on the agenda. Yeah, just one more comment on the same way. This has been discussed as the piece that will, and this has been discussed as the database that will inform the city as well for institution control. So it's likely that it will be on city county planning as well, so that we can put it in the city. So that's another place eventually that it could be. Cool. Yeah. Um, city Clinton. City County planning or what, however that works, do they often um, cross link to assessor's pages? Yeah. Yeah, I think the most, like I, in City County, the GIS maps that are public facing are assessor maps, but then on the City County website, they would probably be a link directly related to the zoning overlay visible. So, I don't know how they'll set it up, but in whatever lookup mechanism <laughs> applies to the zoning, this one could be a GIS mechanism. Right. Um, I am super grateful for this conversation. Beth, thank you so much for bringing a mm -hmm. laptop for people. Mm -hmm. And I, it's 10 or it's seven, six, it's 2022 and 10 a.m. Um, and I want to leave enough time First, to hear a quick update from the city or from DBC, and secondly, to um, to hear from you all in terms of how you're updating, planning to update local new elected officials and ways in which community members can sort of, you know, add on to that in their own lives. So, in any case, can we first hear from you all? Was was it Deb, Tony, Taylor, one of you was sending this quick update? Um, yeah, I think all. And you might have to speak up a little just to make sure. And um, Kevin, we might have to keep background noise. Someone give Kevin a little. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Just because the, out, the people on Zoom won't be able to do it. Um, so we finally wrapped up our water grant. So all the testing and the child care and schools is over. Um, there were a few that are still having some remediation work done, but the state is taking over um, that work, so we won't be involved at all. Um, so those few ones, they 
either they tested high and then a first remediation plan didn't work, um, or they tested high and then it was just we couldn't get to them, and so they they to do the initial remediation. Um, yeah, so it's really exciting. Work on that for two years. So that was two years. Well, like a year and a half, yeah. Because it started October and not 2023, but 2022. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 that one is yeah. So, a lot of early morning. Yeah. 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 Wow. Funny. And that was what really kind of like, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the schools and child care, including the home and child care. I got a quick question. I don't know if you, I, I think last time we were in person, um, you guys mentioned that something about the flush, you guys are waiting to get some answers back on flush, like you test a faucet and it would come up bad, but you're one for six months or something. So you guys find any of that out? Did that come Yeah, back? so all those flush samples, um, basically the initial sample came back high. So mm -hmm. I did the flush sample to figure out if it came from the um, Most of them, it seems it came from the fixture, so not the plumbing. So that's good news uh, because the grant did pay for remediation of the fixture. Mm -hmm. So either they just replaced their water fountain or if it was just like a hand sink that is in a bathroom and they just put signage up that says, okay, do not drink from this, which hopefully no one was in the wings and in the bathroom. Um, but yeah, so all those flush samples were done and then each place that had that elevated level had to either remediation plan like replace it or signage or either they clean their aerators or things like that. So they tried first and if that didn't work, then they replaced. Okay. Yeah, so after each one of those steps that you sampled again. To verify if it if there's a result. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it takes so much time for Tony as well. Yeah. If she had to go look at the beginning of the day for draw, so usually five or six a.m. that she's going to each facility. So yeah, a lot of work on the garden. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I personally sampled it was about thirty, um, but. So all the family home daycares, when I did the initial reaching out and letting know about the program and that it was required, that kind of thing, they offered to just sample themselves. So I just kind of put them on the right path and then the bottles and everything was delivered to them and they did the sampling themselves. Um, the schools, like District 60 and 70, they, they did their sampling themselves, but it was a lot of meetings of why this is a requirement, what they need to do, if they need help on here kind of thing. Um, but all the private schools and the license child care budget. Did you detect some in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I go there, I turn on the faucet, you know, I'm doing everything, so yeah. it'd be pretty obvious if there was like a, a filter or anything on there. Um, <laughs> thank you all. Any other updates from your audience? I know you've got earlier about. Uh, just a quick update for our numbers for 2023. We did some um, data collection and all of that. So we had 48 um, elevated blood lead level cases for 2023. Mm -hmm. We currently have 15 of those that are still open. Um, so the other 33, the child has been below that um, detection level, 3.5 or below. So um, then we dismissed them from our care. Um, and then we have 118 blood blood tests that we did throughout the year, whether that was um, people coming into our lab, if we went to them, um, or different educational and outreach um, events that we went to as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that number you identified? Uh, 118. Um, and then finally, Beth, I think you were going to just give a surprise and quick update about what you're doing to update me with the table. Yeah, so I dropped the mail, run off, it's still running off. 
So, we hear who the new mayor is. We'd like to provide an update so that they are aware of the super fun site and what's going on here. So, can you just summarize the presentation? You just heard y'all well, was much more abbreviated because you're also knowledgeable and you've heard us talk so much. But we'd like to go and do presentations to city council <coughs> and kind of give them a little bit more information about the site because typically when we present to them, it's like, 15 minutes and we have like 10 minutes for presentation, five for questions, and they're just like, hey. and so sometimes we don't get to cover like the depth of we've been here since 2013, like how long we've been here, what we've accomplished, what we're looking at moving forward, trying to answer some of those like baseline questions. So we're aiming to do that this upcoming year and wanted to, I know that y'all have been focusing on, as Ryan highlighted it, but y'all are focused on getting more engagement with the city, so we will let you know what our plans are for updating them, and then if you want to consider your approach to them, as well as if you want to reach out and talk about redevelopment or engagement, like the door is certainly open, so I just kind of wanted to let you know what our strategy is, so that y'all are aware and you can take that as you want. So we're targeting February 8th, maybe, but if we have a mayoral runoff information. Yeah, it's 23rd. Okay. We've established they don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Um, okay. The, the intent actually was also to highlight this, these events, the CAG, uh, you know, stuff that we're doing. You know, the pure, all the stuff that we're talking about, and here's a highlight that invite them as well. So that's where I think what you know we can get from help after that comes like, hey, I know we know that you, the EPA presented with you to you. We know they gave you the history of the site. We know that you we saw the slides. You're going to see the slides. We saw the information presented. Can you guys come? When are you coming? You know, and they can get to help hopefully drive from that home um, as we try and do that as well. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, and I, I guess any community recommendations on how best to get the new district four rep here or involved in things or any key at large members? Well, our congresswoman's changing districts, so district four move. Uh, I'm curious. I don't know. I don't remember the name, but yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a new person. Yeah, it's yeah. a new person. And I I live in the district, but I think it's mm -hmm. I'm certain it's going to slip. I can never remember the name of who's representing me now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can put. I mean, I don't know if you all want to. We can have an update in, again in February to, you know, yeah. hear if, if and when that's happening, that kind of update is happening, and you all can do any brainstorming you want to do. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if, I guess my, my thought on some of this too is that because we often get such a short time with city council updates, mm -hmm. that if, if we want more time, that we are tag teaming mm -hmm. and you guys also get yourselves on the agenda. Okay. I think that, you know, if we all put up, Efforts together, we could probably do something like that. Okay. I'll put it on this February. Um, so, so how about we Harris and Velma? You are making it hard for them. <laughs> no problem. Call out. <laughs> Sorry. Word to them. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think we're good. I think the last thing I just want to say is you all remember we you update, looked at your bylaws this past year. Actually, shared them with Kevin because it, to give a sense of what the CAG is about. So, anyway, the, by, the bylaws, the new bylaws, I printed out a couple copies. They're on the table, I think, over there. Um, if anyone wants to see them, I'll, I emailed them to the steering committee. They're, anyway, they're available. They're on the website. Um, if anyone has any questions, but I think you've all seen them. Paul. Um, I just have one more point. And, uh, Tag steering committee. We also had a suggestion to get in touch with Jennifer Harrison about the environmental justice grant and try to set up a meeting with her, Aaron, and uh, perhaps the tag steering committee to investigate any uh, opportunities that she might have. Um, 
Yeah, so totally, thank you. I, right after that steering committee meeting, I got in touch with Jennifer. I feel like I copied you all on that email, but maybe not. Anyway, and she has since been connecting. I mean, the whole idea was connecting the dots and finding as many, the right community organization with understanding that you all as citizens and residents weren't going to be writing those grant applications, obviously, but that you wanted to, you know, as much as possible support those funds being, you know, sought after by the community. And so she got in touch with then, I think she and Amanda with Christina Trujillo and with a bunch of other nonprofits. And I think Beth has been communicating with the nonprofits about all these grants. So that that was one thing that happened um was that there was like a lot of action to get the grant information to the community members to the nonprofits that could apply but i guess the question would be what would be helpful for you all steering committee members in terms of being in the loop in whatever way you want to be and being able to support those efforts so there's been lots of suggestions from the health department of the in particular um, that uh, these neighborhoods are right for this environmental justice grant so that we should be pursuing it Mm -hmm. And you know, um, the health department has been the greatest asset that we've had in the community to actually access any of these uh, functions. So, I would like to still see some uh, accessibility that for us to still be able to participate in that expenses. So. For, for you all as steering committee members and well, the health That's just my own personal opinion. I'm not sure if everybody else agrees mm -hmm. that, but you know, by passing off and disenfranchising the tag. Yeah. It doesn't seem as very effective. You might not even want to be here if you're not going to have a voice or have any participation. Totally. Yeah. I think it was um, a really frustrating and unfortunate thing that like, Jemina was able to do so much work and let be before her to help. And then the, those folks needed to really focus on health department related objectives and different priorities that their management identified for them. Okay. So the next, like the fallback was Mabel were here applying for a couple of different grants and they weren't successful. And so. Yeah, I think it, that was the kind of enabling staff to take it to the uh, community efforts that were mentioned. Mm -hmm. But I think their overall objective still remained the same as far as the community goes and the franchise in the community to be as effective as they can with the revitalization of the community. Yeah, and if I understand the issue, this is a classic problem in our town, those things get siloed and yeah. mm -hmm. then fall between the cracks, and so they don't get done. And frankly, that's one of the things that we would always try to do is, you know, try to get somebody at the two local governments to take a global look at the grants that are available, which types of grants, which agencies or governments might be able to tap into, and kind of have a global plan. And it sounds to me like we're still suffering from that, frankly. Uh, uh, money is on the table, it's being lost yeah. simply because we don't know who to say, go get this. Mm -hmm. now, or, you know, a lot of times a nonprofit will look at it and say they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. and, and so somebody can help them. And I think that the city has a, um, as I understand it, has a specifically designated grant writer. And maybe that's the place for it. I don't. I don't know the what, but it maybe that was in it left and went someplace else. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure they still have those. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But see, that was the trouble with the county. It was one thing we're, that we were trying to do, and uh, you know, and there's always screw all things that keep this from happening. But that was the idea: was if the city had that and the county had that, and those two people talked on a regular basis, mm -hmm. none of these grant monies would fall between the cracks. Well, I, I think it still is. It's, I think so too. And, you know, I maybe perhaps with an email or the mayor gets reelected, whatever, we could impress on him the kind of pressing need for that kind of cooperation. Yeah, and the thing is, is, you know, one of the things that over the years working with the, the uh, public health department is management of the health department would say, well, you know, we can only accomplish so much with how much money we have. So, here are the four things. Are we taking on more? If we're taking on more, we need to add more money. And so there's some strategic decisions that are going on there. Well, if money is falling between the cracks and the most logical agency is the health department, 
the health department basically owned by the city and the county. So there should be a cooperative effort to work with the health department and say, okay, what do you need to go after this grant? And then we will supply you with the need. So that communication is not there. Right. And so all we hear is, okay, well, health department's made a decision not to pursue something. I know it's going to be required. They don't have the money to do it. It's a simple thing. Yeah, and so, wait, guys, before you say that, so we're going to wrap up in one minute. I want Des to have a chance to say what you're about to say, and then just like making sure we capture the spirit of these last comments and bring them into conversations going forward and the during meeting. But does it say? So this is a conversation that Aaron and I have had. The health department doesn't qualify to apply for these environmental justice grants because we accept more than a million dollars. Is it a million? Whatever the cap is, hundred thousand. I don't know what. Whatever that is, that cap is. So we, as the health department, don't qualify for to apply. We cannot apply. But, 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 it's, but another, another but that, that's where the partnership yeah. and leverage yeah. yeah. can become really important. It is. Yeah. That's so the way we make sure. Who's an appropriate applicant? Yeah, because you can right. understand the health department saying, well, we can't apply because we can't take in that additional right. money. Yeah. But then the ability to communicate that to the rest of the county and the city and say, we can't let this money disappear. Who's going to take it? Yeah. And then the decision maker is to say, well, someone at the table is going to take that. I will just yeah. say that before we close out, the, the principles I'm hearing here are like not letting money disappear and fall through the cracks. Having a global approach and having it be acceptable and inclusive. That's yeah. what I'm hearing, and like not that. Yeah. So I'm gonna note that we're gonna I'm gonna pass it on to Jennifer, mm -hmm. and I think we'll continue the conversation. So Jerry, thanks for taking that. Yeah. Um, can we? A question I just wanted to ask: Does are there like key things that we need to know as agency people about particular programs limitations, so that when we're looking at grant opportunities? Well, so we're going in the right way. Well, Mary, if we could say that for February, so I can talk about things more, and my colleagues share that, and how we can do most effective at getting work out. That's I great. Wanna, I think we're, we're, we're on some yeah. important grant cycles this time of year. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to lose it. Sabrina, I think Aaron will have a good conversation with you about that. Okay. Can we talk about that tomorrow? Okay. Oh, okay. Good idea. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for going a couple minutes over. Um, Thanks everyone for being here. Great conversation. Have a good night. Well, Jaren, I think we want to clear out pretty quickly because I think we need to be able to go. Denise, have you set up more like this? Yeah. 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 Yeah.